Hey guys, it's Tarko Cyclone FPV, and I am actually putting a video together here. Hold on, let me clean up a little bit. I got my phone going crazy. Everything going nuts today. Uh, so I am going to uh, do a video real quickly on the new product that we're going to be carrying, which is the Toolkit RC M6. I know it's not new on the market, but it is new for us, and I usually will wait to bring things in. Um, you know, not exactly when they get released, because I want the kinks to be worked out. Kind of like... Um, Pretty much everything else that comes out nowadays as the beta we're all on involuntary beta testers i guess but in either case um i received a case of these uh, a couple days ago and they look like this i think you're familiar with them right and so they're these small 83 gram testers so i've got them here i'm going to do a sharing of the um uh, bench here there we go and let me just zoom out a little bit okay and i've got here obviously now i've already opened this up but there was a lot of things I wanted to learn. I had noticed that there were some videos out there on this that did not cover uh, some of the features. And I was wondering why, and I just figured it's because people didn't want to dive into anything more than the LiPo part. And I was like, well, then if that's the case, I need to open it and try to understand it. And I'm not an expert at this by any means, but I will tell you that uh, it was worth learning some of the features. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out. Uh, this is the unit right here. I'm sure you've seen it online before, and uh, most of you are familiar with it. I was not, uh, and I had my doubts about it. Um, I do have a couple little concerns, but nothing major I'm not gonna dwell on. And I did end up going into Ohm's Law and all this other stuff when I was first doing the video. And as you can see here, there's all my math on the ohms and uh, resistance and all that. But I decided I'm just going to stick with the product itself. And then we've got a whole series on batteries coming out that's really going to shock you guys, I think. Um, and I'll get more into that in a little bit. So here's what we've got. Uh, this is the test. I'm going to go ahead and weigh it. And this is all it is really right here. So it should be 83 grams. There you go. 83 grams. So we're done with this. I'm going to go ahead and put that away. That's pretty much just for that purpose. Uh, so let's go over a few things here, and this is what I wanted to make sure I knew before I uh, brought it to you. Uh, we've got our input here from 7 to 28 volts, and so I'm going to use a DC, AC to DC converter. I need to turn the voltage down real quick on it, um, but I'm going to input at about 12.5 volts. Uh, but I will use an AC to DC converter for the first part of this, so I can show you how it works, and then I will use a battery for the second part to charge another one. On this side is the output. You've got your balance, uh, balance leads here, and then your main uh, voltage there or your main XD60 there. Uh, you do have a 5 volt uh, 2.1 amp external power right here uh, and so what this does actually it's internal or external I'm not really sure if it was meant to be that way uh, the directions didn't say in there but if I plug this into the wall from here which I don't know I guess if you wanted to um, that would power it up but I don't know what I think and we'll find out in just a little bit. It may be that if I power this up, I can power my receiver up. Uh, but it does do an output. So if you do have a battery in here and you want to charge your iPhone, you can. Uh, the other thing is that you've got your um, receiver tester here. And what this is, this is both an input and output. Uh, and it's really cool. Uh, this is what I was not going to cover. And then I said, you know, I'm going to learn a little bit more about that part. It turns out to be a pretty handy tool. Probably one of the cooler things about this actually is that tool. But only if you build quads or if you get frustrated with the damn S bus like I do. Okay, so let's go ahead and just power it up here. I'm gonna put, like I said, 12 volts of a um, AC to DC converter. Uh, you're gonna hear it here, and there it is. It's, uh, and so you've got this, it looks like a touch screen, but it's not, most of you probably already know that. So you've got these buttons here to go between the screens. Now, it's all cool, except it's not very accurate, meaning if I touch between the two, or if I accidentally touch anywhere else around it, I get the kind of response, uh, things that I didn't really expect to have happen. So uh, my fat fingers seem to move this thing all over the place, and getting accurate with it is not as easy as I was hoping, but that's probably more of me having sausage fingers than it is this thing. Uh, so anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and we have our charging feature, right? So you can have the default battery, which they have in, in uh, the memory, or you can have these two new ones. It's got an option for two new ones. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. Um, so as you can see right there, it says new. Okay, so you got new and new, right? So if you want to go to there, you just scroll and then you press enter and it'll do it. But I'm going to use the one that they're doing. So uh, for this case of this one, we'll go back to charging in just a second. But at the bottom here, um, you can, if you hit enter, you can see you can charge, discharge, and storage charge. And then you can select the options here, meaning change your battery type from LiPo. Uh, you can go to high voltage and so forth. Uh, we're going to be using LiPo. You can change your end voltage if you want. I'm going to leave it at 4.2. You can have it detect your cells automatically, which is what I do normally. Current uh, for charging would be at 2 amps and discharging would be at 2 amps. So depending on the battery, that should be okay. And so then we're going to get out of that by hitting the exit button, which is a square at the top. Now we can go to measure and so measure is going to tell you basically your battery um, like i mean the information about your battery so this is one from banggood that i have just never used but i decided to use it as my testing uh, battery so i'm just going to plug that in and then i'm going to go ahead and put in my and now here is one of the complaints i do have is that these pins are uh, uh, kind of problematic and i guess i'll stop and show you that real quick the reason they're problematic in my opinion uh, is because they have the pins set wrong I'll, in my opinion. I'm not dogging them about it, but I'll explain to you why the logic behind what I'm saying. All right, so let me get these things to point real quick, right? 
So if you could look at this, right, um, and I'm going to get kind of technical on why I am this way, but uh, let's compare these two. Uh, the one thing uh, that you can see here is that the gap from the top of the plastic on this, this is a, just a standard LiPo meter, from the top of the plastic to the pins, the gap is shorter than from the bottom of the pin to the bottom of the plastic, right? So this gap in the bottom is wider than the gap on the top. And if you look at your LiPo uh, balance leads, you can see there is more plastic at the bottom to, for that large gap that I was talking about, and there's less at the top to the hole here. So if you compare the two, they kind of line up exactly the same, which means you basically turn this around, plug it right in, and you start getting your information. Okay, let's look at another one. This is an E4 cube tester, or a charger, right? This is my favorite charger. By all, by all means, I love this one. This, one, this sucker's awesome, right? So let me zoom out a little bit. And you can see here that you have the rails, uh, the rail guides, right, for your balance leads. I think you see it, yeah, there you go. So the rail guides right here for your balance leads. And on here, if you look close enough, I don't know if I get the angle, but there are rail guides right here, right? So there's these two things that stick up about half a millimeter. And it prevents you from putting it in backwards, right? You can't put the wiring upside down. It has to slide in this way. And what they do basically is they make the gap here perfect to be able to fit the rail guides in the slot. If you try to turn it around, the gap is like short by about half a millimeter, which is the size of the rail guides. So you can't put this in backwards. Okay, one last one, which is another generic one. Now this one's a little different, but just to give you an idea, the ground is on the right and the positives are all on the left. And as you can tell, if you look at this, uh, this is gonna fit perfectly in here, except this one does not have really a limit. So you could theoretically turn this upside down. This is my big complaint with this. All right, it's my complaint. Not my big complaint, it's my complaint. My complaint is that, uh, where did I put that light bulb? Right here. What bothers me about this is that given the circumstance and given the way the pins are set here, this piece slides in perfectly like this. I mean, it literally slides like it was meant to go in this way, but that's backwards. And the ground is supposed to be over here. Well, if you are looking at it like I am, that means that the pins should be lower than where they're at, and they're not. They've cut the plastic down more to fit the rail guides right here, right? or the, to the rails. What they should have done, in my opinion, is brought the plastic up and put uh, the rails in here for a, uh, at least for one side, at least to make sure that you start off properly. I don't care about the next rail, but the first rail should have been here, and then it slides in properly, but they didn't. So when I went to go plug this in, I actually came in at like normal, and I'm literally stuck right there, and I force it in. That's the right way to do it, but if you go this way, which is the easier way to put it in, this is the wrong way, and it's backwards. So please just be careful. It does mess up the screen, or it does mess up the readings, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's go ahead and plug this back in now. And um, I'm going to go ahead, plug this in, and we're going to, uh, okay, see, again, I was going to do that backwards, so we're going to go over and put that in that way. So let's go to the measuring, and I'm going to flip these little feet out here, and you can see this fan on the bottom. It's like a CPU fan, excellent fan. doesn't really come on that much, but when it does, it works out real well. It's very quiet. So let's go to the measuring. I'm going to hit Enter, and so it says for a battery measurement, just hit Enter. So I am, and it's telling me my voltage right now. So it's telling me that each one of my uh, cells is roughly 4.16, 4.15, 4.14, and if I want to balance it, all I have to do is see where it says voltage. I'm just going to go around and balance and hit enter, and it's going to start balancing. And you're going to see as these numbers start lighting up, right? It's pretty cool. So they're going to light up, and this is cell number three that's lighting up because it's actually going to stop charging, drop it down, and start sharing it down to here. So it's basically going to balance the cells together, and it's saying right now that number three is going to be the highest cell that needs to bring that one down and then balance them together. That's pretty neat. Um, I mean, the balancing part is neat. I'm gonna stop it real quick. I'm gonna go back to voltage now. I'm gonna show you what else it does, right? So let's do this. And let me see if I can make sure I get that on the camera for you. So let's zoom out. Okay, so the next thing it says, and I know it's hard to read. The next one, if I hit it, enter on voltage, I can switch it to internal resistance. Okay, now I will tell you that most manufacturers would argue that this does not measure internal resistance properly because the wires are thin and they don't make full contact with the LiPo pads, but it doesn't matter. For the sake of doing this, let's just run the test. Okay, so the internal resistance it has here is, in, in milliohms, it's gonna be 0 0.015, 0 0.016, and 0 0.016. It gives you the total of 0 0.049. Now, it doesn't show you 0 0.049, but when you take milliamps and convert it, you're gonna end up with 0 0.049, okay? That being said, I do not know what the delta is here, because um, to me, delta is when you take the number of items and then you add them together and then you divide to, uh, by the number total. So like if you have, um, I don't know, let's say 1.5, 1.5, 1 1.5, or Point one five, whatever. So you have three fifteenths, right? So that's going to be 45. Then you would take that and divide it by three, right? And you would end up with 15 because that's the average. So um, here I would think that it would be 15, 16, 16, uh, which would be 47. And then if you take 47, that's, it's a little off right here. 
But if you take 47, you divide it by three, then you would end up with like 1.56 something or other. The two is wrong, but I don't know if it's giving me an average of two uh, uh, on purpose or if the math isn't right or if it's calculating something else. So we just go with that for right now. But in either case, it does say that this is my resistance and that's fine. So let's get out of that real quick and let's go down to output, right? So on output, and this is what you have to be careful of here because it's almost like charging. On output, uh, what you can do is you can hit enter and go to the, uh, if you want to do power output, and you've got options for receivers. So you've got your custom one and you can go in here and you can change your voltage output, which is basically going to come out of here. Uh, voltage output and you can change your amp output, right? So you get to dictate out of here, it kind of comes like a little power supply. It's pretty cool. I mean, uh, I, did, I did see some use out of that. I could see some use out of that easily. Um, power up anything you want, but at least you get to, get to control the voltage out of this. So it's like a regulator. And I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so that's that part of it. Now we've got our settings. So let's go to our settings real quick. Oh my Lord. Okay, so the lowest input is gonna be 10 volt. That's the setting that comes with and I'm fine with that. Uh, but if you wanna change, you just hit enter and then go down to whatever you want. Uh, output power or input power, I'm not worried about it. 200 watts is fine. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. Safe temperature 70, that's fine. Safe time now by default, and I forgot that I already changed this, so let me go to default and hit okay. All right, so when you go to default, it's gonna be like 100 and something minutes, right? I didn't want that, so I just hold the down arrow, hit enter, and I'm gonna to go to 60. That's my safety, okay? Anything beyond that, and I've got a serious problem. Uh, really nothing else here is gonna matter. I am gonna hit okay and get out of that. And then we've got our, um, our outputs, right? So if you hit outputs, you got power. Here's where you get your receiver outputs. And if you go to measure, here's where you get your receiver measuring. Now this is really cool, but nobody was covering it in their videos, right? So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And they weren't covering it fully, I guess. And I'm not dogging them for it, I get it. It's new. It was new at the time and it was kind of not explained. The manual is, the manual's terrible. So don't, don't think you're gonna get anything out of the manual. I mean, it's pretty much an illustration of telling you how to plug in a USB cable or whatever else. So give me one second, I'll take a sip here. Now let me show you how cool this is. Okay, so we have our standard battery stuff, fine. Um, as you saw, we've already rated this one. Now let's find out which one of these batteries is crap, because I do have one that is not charged. I'll just use this to balance it real quick or to see uh, where my, um, where my uh, cells are at here. So this is four point, no, this is the one I charged. So this is not charged, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my little adapter here, and I'm gonna plug it in, my little JST adapter, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug the balance in. There we go. I'm going to go to charge. So let's go to measure first and make sure. Uh, so I am at 65%, it says. Uh, and I could do an internal resistance test. Let's see. Uh, this really has bad. This this thing, I've, I, but I've treated it like crap. I have to be fair. Um, so I'm not getting anything out of these batteries anymore, really, because I've run them into the ground. But that's on me. All right, so let's just get out of this and go to charge. Now, I do want to change uh, the, um, you know what, I'm just going to create a new battery because this is, I don't want to change the standard light bulbs, I'm just going to get a new battery. And here I'm going to save this one and I'm going to say yes, that's fine, and that's fine, but the charge rate I need to bring down. So I'm just going to bring it down to one amp and I'm going to tell it to charge and I'm going to say okay. Now, watch this and pay attention to what's going on and we will see. So we know that we're at 11.88 volts, basically 70% power, and we're going to charge at one amp. Now. I'll fast forward this video so you don't have to watch it, but my main thing is for you to watch the time, see how long it takes. So while that's going on, uh, I am gonna go over a few things here. So one of the things that I thought was really cool, and I can't get off the screen, this is something I really kinda wish they would fix if they could, but I mean, I'm not being picky here. It's a cool machine either way, is I wish we could do another function while it's charging. I mean, I get it's charging and all, but it would be cool now to um, be able to use some of the other features, which is what I wanna show you. So uh, we're gonna let this charge. Already we're at 76%, everything is climbing really well. I, you know, I told it that you could charge at one amp. It is charging at one amp. It is pulling about 30% more amperage out of my AC to DC converter, which is fine. Uh, but we are running well here at 12.01 volts. And we're going to see how long it takes to get me from 70 to 100%. All right. So we're almost one minute into it right now. Now, we do have a temperature here at 44 degrees centigrade, or Celsius, I mean. Um, and we're going to wait to see uh, what happens. And then what I'm going to test next, which is pretty cool is this is the fry sky receiver and this is actually a nace one of my favorite boards as you know my nace 32 boards and i'm going to show you exactly what this thing can do it's pretty cool all right so we've gone up 10 percent in one minute now i'm curious if it's going to go up 10 percent each minute that means this would only take three minutes to do but i think it's slowing down right now 
So we're at 81 percent. We already have 30 seconds into our next minute. But uh, for the hell of it, let's just see. So I'm going to explain to you while this is doing this. I'm going to explain to you what the rest of the feature is. So I didn't understand what the um, I didn't understand. Let me see if I can do this so that I can show you my ugly mug here a little bit more. There we go. OK, let's do that. I'm going to let that keep going while we're doing this. So one of the things that this thing has, which, like I said, I didn't know at the time was the S bus or the signal feature on this allows for output and input. Now, what they do is the following, which is very valuable. The first one will allow you to plug in um, your servo lead and it will read from your receiver. It'll tell you what's happening on the uh, sorry from your transmitter. It'll tell you what's happening on the receiver. So um, your receiver will receive your signal. from. I've got my QX7 ready to go. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up and it's bound. And once it's bound, I can see if the receiver is functioning. Now, here's where this is going to help me. Um, what the worst thing about building a quad, now this is an opinion, right? One of the worst things is when you get onto it and everything's good and then you try to get into beta flight and you have no function coming from your receiver. And it's like, God darn it. Well, most of the people, you know, it's kind of something simple maybe, but when you start getting into it and you're like, shit, I don't know if the receiver's bad. I don't know if there's something is wrong. Now you got to take the whole thing apart, get the board out. Do all that. This is going to let me do all of this from this machine itself before I even get to that point, right? So it's going to power it up for me. It's going to read the signal for me. It's going to tell me what channel is moving when I move my transmitter. That's badass. And that I have to give this thing a, a perfect head on because that in itself is very valuable to me because that means now I can just take all my used receivers and I don't have to wire them up to beta flight or to a board and then put them on beta flight and then see, I can actually just plug it into here. It'll power it and give me my readings. And all I have to do is put in a servo cable. Piece of cake. I mean, literally takes down probably about 80% of my time to test per receiver. That's awesome. Here's the flip side. Um, sometimes it's your board, right? You don't have the board configured properly. You don't know what you are to put it on. You're like, Shit, what you are do I put this on? So you're sitting there and you're having to power up your quad and uh, you are, um, uh, you know, you've got your VTX on, let's say maybe, I don't know, let's look at the scenarios. In a, in a board that doesn't power up uh, the um, receiver from the USB connection, you then have to turn on your LiPo. Well, you can't be doing that for very long with your receiver on unless you turn the VTX off. And I mean, it's blah, 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 right? So um, this makes it easier because what this does, this will actually put an S bus signal out. Now it does PPM into PWM, but I don't care about those right now. What I'm talking about is the S bus. It puts those out automatically. So when you tell it you want to do the output of this, you basically wire a servo lead like I have here on my NAS32. You wire this like you would have a receiver, and this big box becomes, or big box in this case, becomes your receiver. From that point, you can plug it into Betaflight, and you can see, you can manipulate the numbers on here like you would moving a stick on your, on your controller, and you can see if it interacts. And if it does, boom, you know you've got SBUS loaded on your board properly, and that's a troubleshooting feature. So I'm going to tell you, those two features are more valuable to me than charging batteries. Um, I, that may be because I build so many quads or I'm doing so much troubleshooting that it's just the way it is, but I got to tell you, um, I would like to see more like that. Now, I do have the, uh, the UR UAV. Uh, it's kind of similar to the smaller one, um, but uh, I haven't even broken the case open yet to even try it. It does supposed to have a similar on reading the stick inputs from my transmitter, but uh, no. So let's see where we're at on this thing real quick. Okay, so at this point we are at 90% uh, and it's taken five minutes to get to 90%. I'm pretty pleased with that. I think we're going to reach 100 here uh, in probably another couple minutes. So I do want to not fast forward this, okay? If you want to fast forward it, go ahead. Uh, we're at 18 minutes, 47 seconds right now. But there's a reason I want to leave it me and that is because there is another concern that I have about this. But in order to understand the concern, I have to leave this running and have to have you lost it, okay? So... Uh, as soon as that's done and we get a measurement reading on that, then I am going to do the receiver section of this, and I'm going to get you to kind of see how cool that is, all right? And I really think you're going to enjoy that one. That's a pretty nifty feature. Uh, uh, getting back to these, they're going to be available on the site. Today is September 13th, Friday the 13th, and so I just opened these up, and, uh, and uh, I'm going to have these on the site, and I'm probably going to have them there for about 25 bucks. Uh, you know, I, I see them up as high as 30 uh, I am not looking to make a living off of this box. I am looking to get something cool in people's hands. And I will tell you, and I want to make this clear because this is kind of a segue into a new thing that we're doing. Um, a lot of you, and I know I've said it a lot, I'm going to come out and do more videos, but I have, I had like this, um, uh, okay, we're at 96%, by the way. So I had this issue come up, right, where I noticed that more people are just believing what they hear. Uh, hey, this frame is better. Why? Oh, I don't know, it doesn't ever break. No, they break. And hey, this board is better. Why? Oh, because it does this. Nah, there's more to it. 
And it's easy to jump on a bandwagon. And I swear to God, this hobby, like many, are run by this bandwagon stuff. Um, and what I realized is, after doing some research from the manufacturers, I'm not dogging any of them, but the regulations in China, for example, I mean, you could pretty much say, hey, this is made of gold and nobody's checking it on the way out. Now, no dogging, I'm not dogging them, please, by any means. We do squirrely shit too, everybody does. But when you're spending money that you worked hard to make and you're spending on a product, you want it to do what you, you, know, what you expect. And the point I'm getting at is, I'm reviewing this right now, I'm demonstrating it to you, and I realize that I have about 10,000 items in my inventory and only about 100 have a review for me or have a video for me. I'm like, well, that sucks because you guys don't know what to buy and you, don't, you, know, you can't just trust me that I'm selling you something good because I may make a mistake when I purchase. So I have gone with my pilots, uh, with my pilots and with some other guys and I've said, okay, I'm investing in all the equipment we need to test everything. Uh, I just bought a battery uh, system uh, that will charge, discharge, and give me the readings, and it's like eight, nine thousand dollars, whatever it is. It's a huge investment just to test, test lipos. But that is my biggest concern right now is lipos. Okay, that was the beep, by the way. So I want you to understand that is the beep when the battery's done. The only thing about this that bothers me is I have a very hard time hearing, hearing that beep, especially if I've stepped away, like not out of the room, but over there or something, and I've got music playing, whatever. Number two, I don't see it stopping. Um, and I was a little surprised about that. I'm still pulling about 1.3 amps out of my AC-DC converter. This is pushing about half an amp into the battery and it will fluctuate. It will go up and down a little bit, but it doesn't cut off. The fan will still run and everything will still be happening until I press stop. Now it took eight minutes to go from 70 to 100. Pretty decent, I have no problem with that. And that's running off of this right now, right? So I'm gonna go ahead now. I'm just gonna tell the stops. So I'm hit the stop here. Okay, I'm gonna say yes, stop working. And there's my readings right there, right? Now, let me show you about the rest of this real quickly, okay? So I'm gonna take out the AC to DC. Now this will act now like a power meter, right? So it's just gonna give me the information I want. So if I get out of here and I get out, I go to measure and I hit enter and I go, oops, and I go to battery. Okay, so there's my information. Now, what is weird to me is that this rates my battery at 96%, but when I charge it, it said it was 100. There's something weird there that I could not tell you. You cannot do a, a resistance test because you have to have input power coming in. So I can always use this LiPo here, plug it in and uh, do an input test here real quick. And if I do it now, I will get a resistance test here and this is terrible. But now I have 100%, right? Okay, so let me take this out. Okay, what I wanna show you next is the feature to do with the uh, S bus, all right? Because the rest of this is plain simple. You don't have to charge a battery, you're in good shape. So I'm gonna take this S bus and I'm gonna plug it in. Now this is a whoppy job wiring, so don't, don't get on me about this, but it was just something I did last minute. So check this out. Signal uh, positive and ground from the bottom up. It's a uh, signal positive ground, there we go. And I'm gonna plug that in, okay? And all of a sudden, as long as my soldering doesn't come out and these things don't touch, which I think they just did, as long as they don't, my whoppy jaw soldering doesn't touch, there we go. So we are seeing, and you can see here, I think, uh, if you look at that, you see the red light blinking, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to measure, and I'm gonna go, whoops, and I'm gonna, okay, yeah, this, sorry, this is actually another flaw on this. If you do not have power plugged into the side, this really bothers me, actually, because you cannot get out of this screen, right? And I don't know why that is. That's something they designed, but I'm gonna plug in this LiPo so that I can function more, all right? But you can't get out, see, now I can get out. All right, so I'm gonna go, and what I wanted to know was, does this thing power up? From the other side battery here so we're going to find out we're just going to hit enter and enter okay so here's my readings here right and i'm going to go ahead and power on my, my transmitter which you're going to see right here let me zoom out a little bit so that we can see all this on one screen okay let's go ahead and power this up welcome to open okay. so Micro now look at this on. look at that it automatically just it's reading uh from this battery it is reading uh my transmitter and there you go. Now this is really cool because if I need to calibrate, God darn it, I'm, gonna, lost. I'm hoping, yeah, I must have just hit the wire and it, I think it's... Telemetry recovered. Yeah, 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 relax. I think I just popped the uh, ground or something here. So let me just, whatever you do, do your wiring better than me. I wasn't planning on keeping this like this, but now it's killing me. All right, so as you can see right here, we've got the screen. Let me zoom out. And now I'm going to move the sticks here. Telemetry and, lost. Uh, Telemetry you see how it's recovered. going? There you go. All right, so we have stick input. All right, and I can see if everything is... Oh, shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, we've got that part going, and we've got our switches. Okay, so if you look, there you go. Okay. So this is a great way to make sure 
that these two are linked up and you got it right here. Now what I did want to check, and I'm going to find out real quickly while we're doing this, I'm going to unplug this, I'm going to unplug this. Telemetry lost. Yeah, yeah, be quiet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I have, I guess it won't matter if I could do it on USB, but you know what, I got to know for me. So let me go ahead and take this USB cable out. Right, I think I have one already out. So here's it, here it is, this is the cable that comes with it. Right, and I'm going to try to give it some voltage this way and see if it will still do it. So let me grab a portable charger. Okay, so I've got a portable charger here. All right, this is just a, like a standard one I use for my phone or what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. All right, I'm gonna plug this in. I wonder if this will power it up. It, it should, I'm not mistaken, it should. Now, hopefully I'll see the screen, and there you go. And now let's look at the receiver. And now my receiver's getting power. So literally, oh, shut up. So, and sorry, this is just because I have a poor soldering job here. So it's gonna be, but I'm gonna, this lady and me are gonna go rounds. But if I go to measure, oops, hit enter, S bus, there you go. I can see my inputs, and this comes from here. So this is a great way without having to have a LiPo plugged in or having to worry about it. Man, take a portable charger and you can work if you want to, okay? Now here's the kicker. Here's, a cool, here's another cool feature. Now that I've showed you what happens when you use the measuring feature, let's go to the output feature. But to do that, I need to take this out because we're done with this part now. And now what I want to do is I want to measure how it reads in Betaflight. So I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm going to plug this in. And basically this takes the place of the receiver, but I wire it to the board the same way. I'm assuming this will work. and. I do have power going to my board from this portable charger, okay, which is feeding off of here actually. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the beta flight, I'm going to take my USB cable and I'm going to plug it in. What I do not know is if I'm going to get a reading or not yet because, uh, but let's see, we're just going to see. All right, so at this point my transmitter doesn't matter anymore because I'm not actually broadcasting it. I'm looking to see if my board is configured good for, so I'm going to go to my ports, right, you've done all your ports. Go to my configuration, make sure that I've got S bus done. And now I'm gonna go to, oh, you guys can't see that, sorry. Let me, um, let me see if, the, no, I better do it this way. So let's go like this. There, let's do that, okay? So uh, I've got my board here. And I'll zoom in a little bit there. And I've got beta flat on the other side, right? So I'm going through and I can see that I've got S bus and now I'm gonna go to my receiver. And what I want to know, and this is where obviously I had a big question was, would this receiver be able to take the input uh, on this? So let's go to output. Oops, it's not touch screen, I'm sorry. Hit enter. Go to S bus, hit enter. Oops. See, fat finger thing. Now look at the screen, okay? On the beta flight side, I'm going to hit this and adjust, and look at that. There you go. So you can hold this down and you can see that my board is now set up for S bus. I don't need a LiPo for this. I don't need any kind of power source except the five volts. What I don't know, well, actually, no, I do know. I mean, th there you go, that's it. I was gonna say, I don't know if it'll power without it, but you can't, uh, oops, I took that too high. But you can make sure, okay, you can make sure that you're set. And then you can go down to any channel you want and you can go all the way through your 16 channels, okay? And then you can even that you can even make it as if failsafe also. If you watch the board, you see the blue light. I'm going to turn failsafe on. You see how the green is blinking now? That's my failsafe. So I get to see now how the board reacts when I do failsafe. And if you look at the values on the screen there, uh, my throttle went down. But if I turn it back off, uh oh, sorry, hold on. Okay, so this is. I mean, I, I, it's because my, I don't know, I guess they, you have to have really, really skinny fingers. Oh boy, I cannot seem to get this to wanna take, so let me. All right, I don't know why it's doing that, but I need to turn this off. I don't want fail safe anymore. There we go, okay. Let's get out of this and then we're back to normal. Sorry about all that. And you can do a few other things here, but the main thing is, is the main thing is that you better have skinny fingers when you use this thing. But as you can see here on my throttle, 
if I want to take this up, see, and you can make it manipulate like that. So basically, you can test all your boards, you can test your board without having to sit there and worry about all this crap, okay? Very happy with this entirely. So where I was uh, maybe skeptical, uh, I'm no longer skeptical. Uh, I am very proud of this product. I think it's a great, a great addition. Uh, I think it's a great thing to have on hand. Um, and so uh, my, my, let me get this off of here, please. Sorry. There we go. All right. So at the end of the day, um, I will say that this is an extremely handy tool. I do think it's great for a charger. I can tell you, and I'm not going to waste too much of your time on this one. I can tell you that a charging through a standard LiPo was easy as a piece of cake. It does it, it charges just as fast. I mean, it does well. And I can charge quite a few of these smaller LiPos with this with no problem at all. All right, I, especially if I'm putting out one amp. Uh, I'll be here, you know, you've got plenty of time, plenty of power for that. Uh, excellent product uh, entirely. Uh, I think it was very well made. Uh, and I'm not usually one, hold on, let me, let me try to make this fair because they deserve screen time there. So let's do it like this. Boom, there we go. Okay, so I think if I point that way, yep, that's it. Excellent product. Uh, it will be about um, 25 bucks, I think, like I said. Uh, and I'm gonna put them on tonight. Uh, I would definitely get one of these. And uh, I'm gonna probably order a couple hundred more now. I think that they're, I think they're definitely worth people having. Uh, and I did, I did want to tell you that I did take measurements uh, using the watt, uh, using the lipo meters and using a, uh, a voltage uh, meter and to make sure that everything was pretty square. Outside of the delta internal resistance, uh, I, I found that everything was pretty much spot on. So Toolkit RC, excellent job. Um, I'm very uh, excited to be able to offer this product. And uh, what happened? Why did it get so dark? Hmm, I don't know. Hello? You guys are so dark now. Hold on. What the heck? Hey, there we go. Brighten it back up. Okay. So uh, other than that, guys, I hope this really helps. I know it's a kind of a, it's a 30 minute review, but I wanted to be thorough about it. Sorry if you don't like that. My, my bad. Um, and stay tuned because tonight I'm going to put an announcement as to what our new testing It's going to be battle of the brands. And I'm going to pull in all the manufacturers um, that I feel like pulling in, including TBS, because even though I don't sell them, they're still a great uh, brand that, uh, uh, I need to test against other brands so we can have some comparisons. And uh, China Hobby Line, uh, Thunder Power RC, uh, Turnagy Batteries, um, uh, HDLRC, I mean, we'll go list on and on. Uh, so there will not be a brand that's off limits, and I'm spending my own money to bring their products in here, so I am not getting paid to give a review or a test comparison. So if they fail and I carry them, oh, well, too bad for me. I bought something that wasn't good, I guess. Uh, but uh, other than that, guys, okay, I'll see you soon. Uh, God bless y'all, fly safe. And if you need anything, hit me up at, oh, wait, yeah, what is that? Subscribe to us there, um, follow us or like us here, and email me there. Hopefully all that makes sense. Okay, and uh, if you don't need anything else, safe flying. God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye.